This is Stacey Jane with Critical Thinking Podcast. Thinking shit through one podcast at a time. Uh oh, don't look, Stacy. Where? She's a babe. She's a robo babe. In Latin, she would be called Babia Majora. Look. She's signaling to us there is a God. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your boy Don Cornelius here live on Critical Thinking Podcast. I want to tell you, remember to keep it up. Peace, love, and see <laughs> the fuck. <laughs> I realized that. He hit it and quit it. <laughs> <laughs> <My God. laughs> yeah. My man. That's right. It's like the Matrix. We mind fuck you so bad your ass feels it. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> Who coming? Kiss. That's what I'm talking about. I ain't giving you none, but the band is. That's right. Kiss. Greatest band ever rocked the world. Yeah, Gene Simmons gonna wait, give wait, it wait. Them. They're giving it to Miguel? What? Yeah, Gene Simmons going to give you the tongue? Yeah, see, I'll be sitting in row eight, and he's still getting me. <laughs> <laughs> he dropped the load. A little bit on the, on the light side. He forgets himself mm-hmm. sometimes to forget who's sitting across from him. Yeah, did you breathe hard first? <laughs> All right, how was yours? So gay. <laughs> So guess what, man? Guess. I heard George Michael's coming. He's dead. Well, shit, I guess he ain't. <laughs> Who lied to me and told me he was coming? <laughs> Look it up on YouTube. On uh, what? On YouTube. On YouTube. I didn't know the Jews had a tooth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's all about banking. <laughs> yeah, and keeping that penny. <laughs> yeah. So, a priest, a Jewish rabbi, and a uh, Baptist minister were all together having dinner, you know, and they were like, you know, uh, how do we do collections, you know, we just do all interest. Well, the priest goes, well, I collect all the money from the church, you know, and then I uh, I take out my measly sum, okay? And, and the uh, Baptist minister goes, well, you know what, I, I get all the money from the congregation, I draw a circle on the ground, I throw the money up in the air, well, lands in the circle belongs to God, well, lands outside, the circle belongs to me. So the money-hungry Jewish rabbi goes, that's pretty good, I do something similar. I draw a circle as well, throw the money up in the air, what stays up belongs to God, what comes down is mine. <laughs> Brought to you by <laughs> the Roman Catholic Church. <laughs> <laughs> hey now! <laughs> this brought to you by the Texas Lutheran Church of <laughs> Man, we have every religion pissing us. <laughs> Are you Wiccan? Have you energized your stones? If not, call us at 177 Energize Your Stone. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of Critical Thinking Podcast. I'm your host, Kyle, along with my co-host, Rick the Rizzo, and our other co-host, Sean. And the other Mexican in the room, Miguel G. And this is a critical look at all things gaming, movies, collectibles, and so much more. Hey everybody, if you're looking for a good snack, we recommend you go to TokenMunchies.com. At TokenMunchies.tip.com, you can order anything you really want. Kyle Hawthorne, the Aussie in Japan, yes, I said it correctly, he is an Aussie in Japan. He will get you what you want. He has a lot of stuff from chocolate Mentos to Mento Mentos to all kinds of crazy crap. You don't even want to know what it is before you eat it. It's good stuff, though. So go to TokyoMunchies.TikTok.com and order anything you want. Because if you got the munchies, he's got the munchies. You ever feel like taking your anger out on somebody, but you can't? Well, go on down to Tank's Paintball down there on Southwest Freeway in Richmond, Texas, where you can shoot your own brother in the ass and get away with it. Yes, sir, you can shoot a perfectly good normal neighbor in the ass and ain't going to do a damn thing about it. Just go out there and go, boop, 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 unload on him. But guess what, though? He can shoot back. So make sure you got plenty of pellets, a grenade, and a vest. Why does it sound so racist? It's not. <laughs> We're not. But just come on down here to Tank's Paintball and shoot your cousin in the ass. It's all perfectly legal down here. Again, on Southwest Freeway in Richmond, Texas. Proud sponsors of a Critical Thinking Podcast. And what is now? Oh, you forgot his catchphrase. I go sling some paint. Is that a code for sex? <laughs> <laughs> and last but not least, Uncanny Comics located in Rosenberg, Texas. He's so large, he's everywhere. When he sits around, he sits around. Uncanny Comics, Joseph Cano owns a shop where you can see Winter and his lovely dog, Venom. They're both dogs, but one's not lovely. The other one, he don't know. He got a look on him. Every time I walk in there, he growls. Of course, Joseph tells me he's like, he can sense evil. <laughs> and I look at him, well, then how come he ain't eating you yet? <laughs> My point there. But Joseph has everything you want. Joseph also has snacks. And guess what? He also carries stuff from TokenMunches.TikTok.com there. So feel free to go by and pick up whatever he has there and try it because he does give giveaways. But he has great comics, great games, all kinds of stuff you can play there 24-7. It's, it's a good old time. I'll tell you what, man. Remember what I said here. Uncanny Comics. Thanks, Paintball. 
And talking about that, 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 come. What about the ramen box? I have not gotten there yet. <laughs> And in case you just don't have the munchies and you're really hungry and you want to get yourself on some some crazy noodles, go to Japan Ramen Box. These fools got everything. They got Rick's favorite wasabi. They got some crazy stuff out there. I mean, they got stuff I ain't even heard of. I know it can't be legal in the States. I don't know if it's been approved by the FDA, but let me tell you something. If you want it, they get it here. Japan Ramen Box. They are now a proud sponsor of Critical Thinking Podcast and Make One Talk Scrap. Japan Ramen Box. Check them out. The radio station, sir. Okay. All right. God damn it. Je- Jesus Christ. Have you got yes, time? To- you <laughs> <laughs> if you ever want to listen to the Critical Thinking Podcast, go to 937 The Jesus Radio. Now playing Critical Thinking Podcast every Sunday at 8 o'clock in the morning. Critical Thinking Podcast out there spreading the word. Remember, Jesus loves them. Uh, it was your cousin's idea. What? And now, if you really want to hear us, go to, <laughs> go to Dawn Radio, where they play us every weekend, every f- Saturday afternoon, I don't know, Saturday evening, Thursday night, Thursday night, Saturday afternoon, something like that. I done forgot the damn schedule. Don't matter. We're all over that place. we on them like white on rice, like a venereal disease on Kyle. I'm just saying it's all there. At Beyond the Dawn Radio, thank you very much for all that love. Now, if you don't give no fuck whatsoever, then no fucks given is the place you need to be, because honestly, they don't give two shits what you think anyway. They play it, they do it, they eat it. Blue waffles all around for everybody. But not not here. We here at Critical Thinking do not endorse the blue waffle. We prefer the red waffle. But anyway, check us out on uh, No Fucks Given Radio. I forgot what day. Sean, do you remember the day they play us? Nope. Okay, that's he's not the best in the Fuck land. Fuck if I know. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. Finally, WBLZ Media, a.k.a. Ironic Radio. These crazy mofos play us, too, on Monday nights, I believe. Yes, prime time. They got the critical thinking boys out there, but I tell you what. Y'all think we some crazy messed up people. The 8-Bit Bros out there on, on, on Ironic Radio and WBLZ Media, they done lost their shit. They's talking about anus blow and smoking marijuana through the ass. I don't even know what else they're talking about this week. But I tell you what, you want to hear some crazy shit. Tune into them on Tuesdays and Thursdays on Ironic Radio, but don't forget to check us out on Monday because while they take your soul away, we help you get it back. We cleanse it a little bit for you. That's right. We hear critical thinking of the cleanses. <laughs> That's bad. <laughs> <laughs> So, ladies and gentlemen, we hope you've enjoyed those sponsors (laughs) and our radio shows. Now we bring you back to our regularly broadcast program. (laughs) Scheduled program. (laughs) Whatever. I I forgot what it was, too. I was like, shit, what was that saying? Hello, everybody, boys and girls, things and monsters, witches and bitches. Welcome to Critical Thinking, episode one oh nine 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 nine. Oh, excuse me for all you military people, one zero nine er yeah, getting the sex in nine. You What's just, up there, Rick? You just said witches and bitches. Yes, I did. <laughs> Sluts There's and butts. <laughs> <laughs> so we're here, bros. This is episode 109. Wolfman Jack. I'm in there. Oh, he passed away. Damn. 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 Man, y'all be bringing up number dead people today. <laughs> you want to brought up dead folks. <laughs> this shit getting morbid awfully quick. <laughs> Welcome to the Death Comical Pot. <laughs> oh, excuse me. It is dead. It's no longer around. <laughs> Speaking Hi. of dead things, jeez. <laughs> I'm your host, Raven, along with my host, Draven and Craven. Welcome to the Dead Critical Thinking Podcast. Hey, episode why does he get the cool, guy, cool guy's name? I don't know, because he's white. He's white. <laughs> <laughs> white guys always got the name. You know, he, I'm surprised he ain't got a name with an X in it or some shit like Dax or, or Quan X or some shit like that. Something cool with a K, too, you know? like Something like, cool with a K? Like, like Kevin or some shit. I don't know. <laughs> Kevin? That's such a white guy name. <laughs> How many Mexicans you know named Kevin? I don't. Exactly. How many Mexicans you know Miguel? Every goddamn one in this country. <laughs> Yeah, I think there's more Jose's, honestly. Jose, yeah, you're probably right, man. Jose Juan, you know, Pedro's, you know. How many Juan's do you know? How many Juan's? I know a million to Juan. <laughs> <laughs> so, guys, how y'all doing? I'm doing all right, doing all right. I had a good uh, good Thanksgiving. How was y'all's Thanksgiving? You're doing so good, you had to say it twice? Yep. So good, yeah, so nice, you had to say it twice. Because I had Thanksgiving on Thanksgiving and on Sunday. Now, how was your old Thanksgiving there, Sean? We'll start with you. <laughs> okay. Since the white man gets to go first all the time on the radio. Oh, apparently, yeah. Mm-hmm. So bend over, take it. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, we're not doing radio. What are you talking about? <laughs> I think we already established this. None of us are doing that. <laughs> no, but uh, it, was, it was good. It was a good Thanksgiving. You know, definitely got my... Uh, 
You fill watched? on turkey and on Dude, gravy and the, on whoa, everything else. Whoa! Did this man just said he felt on his turkey? Yes. <laughs> no, I said I got my fill on turkey. Oh. And gravy and oh. potatoes and all other stuff. So, yeah, I I, I I carefully chose my words so that there's nothing you can make fun of. In oh, well, sense. see, us Mexicans, we don't understand because you suddenly you said feel. No, oh, that's right. Not, you don't understand English. I'm sorry. Feel. Uh, feel. You must enunciate, pronunciate your words correctly. Do I need to speak in Spanish for you, motherfuckers? Come on. No, because we're not real Mexicans. But, <laughs> <laughs> we wouldn't understand. What? <laughs> Me no speak de español. <laughs> okay. 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 But anyway, <laughs> so yeah, so you Thanksgiving with the family. It, it was good. It was good. And uh, my sister had her boyfriend come over too, so that was cool. Actually, I wasn't invited. <laughs> Which one? Yeah, she, I said her boyfriend, not her Sancho. What oh, the hell? Oh, nice. Right. I'm coming in the back window. And he's at the front door. <laughs> Wait, what was that? It was Miguel. Where was he going? <laughs> Which one was this one we talking about? Which sister? Oh, Anna. Okay. Yep. So it's yeah. her, her boyfriend, Jose. So he came over. That was cool. You know, it was the first actual, I think, uh, boyfriend or girlfriend that actually was there on a Thanksgiving for our family. So. Ooh. Yeah, getting, that's, that's the first. It's getting scarious. Yeah, he gonna scary. Get, he's going to get married to us and get his green card. <laughs> <laughs> Did you just say scariest? It's scariest. <laughs> that's, we'll what about, have to, we have to trademark that. What about the other anyway. girl? Oh, uh, Kelsey? Yeah. Uh, no, she didn't She didn't have her boyfriend there because he was over in Louisiana, actually, with his family uh, over there. So so let me let me get in here and say, he ain't got no time for you, baby. <laughs> he ain't got no time for you. I say, you want to you come stay with a real No, man? the funny thing is, though, he was actually over for dinner, like, the other week, which was funny because he hadn't been over, like, hardly ever. So He was and, making up. And bent over, huh? No. <laughs> <laughs> He was afraid of Miguel, so he didn't come what over. What the hell? <laughs> he, he heard about the podcast I was connected nice. with. <laughs> Yeah, so it was a good Thanksgiving. Um, other than that, you know, my dad came in early, so he was there like Wednesday. This medication helped him with that problem. <laughs> <laughs> came cannot no, it can't. You, you can't take came too. You know, that's you the, that's going your, too far. Your father arrived early. If, if we if we allow the borders of our language to get skewed that far, there won't be a single word we can use anymore. You know, with the guy here who used positronic matrix the other day or whatever it was, I forgot what massive word you used during our previous in- interview. You figured you would stay away from the he came. He dropped the load. You figure he'd be like, he arrived at this point in time. But no, he, he forgets himself sometimes and forget who's sitting across I, from him. I, I, oh, my God, <laughs> motherfucker. I'm going to fucking get you so bad. Is that what you say? I'm going to edit this shit. Oh, my I'm God. I'm going to edit this shit. You're going to look so gay. <laughs> hey, did you breathe hard first? I'm going to take that out of context. And that, too. <laughs> oh, you guys are giving me so much to kill you with right now. Thank you. Thank you so much. That's okay. On behalf know, of my entire lineage, thank Thank you. It's okay. You know, I'll just attack you when we go live at a, at a, oh, a Comic Palooza or whatever, where I have, I have a massive amount of audience around me. And of course, you know, my massive following on Twitter, I can just use the abuse. Oh, know. that's fine. I'll be drunk as shit, so I won't care. It's <laughs> <laughs> all the juice. <laughs> my uh, Thanksgiving was was a, a little bit on the, on the light side. I Ubered the night before, made a shit ton of money, which is really cool. I didn't know it was like the busiest drunk day of the Drunk day of the year. I had no clue that was the day before really? Thanksgiving. Yeah, it's a bunch of people said that. More than New, New Year's? Really? Yeah. Wow. It's like the biggest drinking day of the year. Even my wife told me because everybody's getting ready for the in laws to come. Wait, in. more than St. Patrick's Day? Yeah, apparently yeah. some crazy shit. Yes, people in the car actually told me that. I was like, are you? I was like, what the hell? So they're, the, yeah. the psychology is they're doing it because their in laws are coming? Probably. Probably. Yeah. Wow. Our next next good Uber That's nasty. is going to be uh, New Year's Eve. Yeah, pretty much. But yeah, so, you know, I did that, then had Thanksgiving dinner with the family, enjoyed that, you know, and then uh, went to football game Friday. My wife's high school team, well, it's not her high school, but the school district she works for, they lost. It was a beatdown. It's pretty bad. Uber again on Saturday, we're out there with Rick, you know, had pretty good drives here and there. It was, you know, it was, it was pretty cool. I had some interesting. Uh, Interesting ride. The first, the second ride I had was the funniest. He was talking about, you know, grabbing them by the pussies and stuff. I just bust out laughing the entire time. It, it was pretty funny. Uh, so yeah. So how was your uh, Thanksgiving, Rick? Uh, Thanksgiving was good. I had Thanksgiving at my aunt's house on the Thanksgiving day itself. I didn't Uber Which as much aunt? as you did, my aunt Pat. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I didn't Uber as much as you did. I just did the Saturday. Uh, did some Black Friday shopping. Yeah, I did that too. I was out there. And uh, got a couple of things. I actually just did that for Christmas shopping itself. Mm-hmm. You know, so I'm almost done with my list. I'm just wondering why I see this one Indian lady with fucking ten crock pots. That's the funny thing to me. That that shit is crazy to me. These dumbasses are going there and buy this shit that they put they put on sale at Walmart or Target, whatever you want to say, whatever store it is. And these dumbasses are going there and buy two, three of them. I'm like, 
and then realize later, oh, it was just an impulse buy. Dumbass. And the, the TVs aren't even that great. You're buying a TV, $99. Oh, I got this 32 inch TV. Yeah. Now look at the specs. Go look at the rate of the video comes in. Go look at what this and this and then go look who makes it. And what? Uh, Ibotta? What the hell? <laughs> no, seriously. And then people buying crock pots? Oh, I need 10 of these. Why? Now I get it if you're buying them from everybody else. I, that I understand. But yeah, I, it just cracks me up. I walk in, look at these dumbasses walking around with six or seven bags, six or seven crock pats, 13 crock pats, crock pats whatever you want to call them. Freaking bullshit. All over. I just laughed my ass off. Crotch pats. <laughs> well, pretty much. It was well, funny. What's funny is that we went in later on. Not when, because, you know, Walmart. They started at what at five? Six. Started six? At six, yeah. They don't and, even shut the doors. They just they just put everything out and they yeah. have it wrapped up and at six they unwrap it all and you get yeah. to go crazy. Well, I went in there earlier and saw it all wrapped up. Saw everything. I was like, oh damn, they got a lot of thing good things that are gonna be on the thing. Mm-hmm. Well, when I when we went back, because my sister was getting some stuff, and we went back and I was all like it was already like what at like eight o'clock, mm-hmm. eight, eight thirty around there. So we're sitting out there and like, oh, we're just going I was like, Oh, and we go like then. Every fucking one of those little display things mm-hmm. gone. Wow. I was like, fucking vultures in this damn town. Yeah, because, you know, these, these people are, it's, it's, it's already set in your head. They got you. They got them by the short and curlies. Cause they just put it out there and say Black Friday and special and it's the shit they want to get rid of out of their warehouse or the shit that just been manufactured really quickly so they can get it out of there. And dumbass fucks go out there and buy this shit and, I don't know if Walmart's known for this, but I can tell you Target does this shit. Yeah. Target marks it up. So then when they mark it down, it's really not a discount. You're still buying it what it was. So it's like, oh, let me fuck you in the ass with this. And here you go. Uh, I may think, I don't even know if the best deals at Walmart, maybe the movies, maybe that might be, uh, might be the best thing. You can get a season for $10. I mean, you get everything you want on anyway. So that's fine. But I think that may be. But that's because it's a starving market. I mean, everybody's doing streaming anymore. So Mm -hmm. anything they can do to get rid of and unload some of those hard copies, DVDs, Mm Blu-rays, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, well, out of the Black Friday, I actually did. I actually got a Hulu exp- uh, uh, subscription now. Nice, because it's ninety nine cents a month for a year. Oh wow! So I was like, okay, I'll do it then, <laughs> and cancel at the end of the year. What a cheap ass! <laughs> <laughs> but that's a good move. Yeah. Nice. Where's my cut in on it? <laughs> <laughs> I gotta set how many devices I can put on it. I can probably ultimate, add you to it. Ultimate cheap ass here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and no. then, and then you know, Sunday we did it with actually the immediate family mm-hmm. Thanksgiving, and that was that. You know. You know, the interesting thing you say about Black Friday is I was out there. Like I said, I went to Walmart and I went to Target and then we went home. It didn't feel like a normal Black Friday, not like it did before. Like back in the day, if you go back a couple of years ago, maybe four or five years ago, whatever, when me and my wife used to go out a lot, really hardcore, or even when it was still like you wait till Friday at midnight, that's when it started. And th- Thursday night at midnight, Friday morning, whatever you want to call it, that's when it all kicked in. And there was like shitloads of people and there's people outside waiting in line. Nah, there wasn't, you know, even when I got there at six o'clock, it wasn't even that bad. It was not like before you could never walk. It's like, you basket, hell, you don't want a basket because you can't push it around. Yeah. But uh, yeah, the baskets were all gone, but still we, we, we got a basket went in and we found a basket went in and it wasn't that bad at all. I was like, wow, this is really tame and lame. I mean, it's because it's people have caught on. I mean, we're, everybody's not as dumb as sometimes we see. We, we tend to have this idea that the masses are really stupid and we're smarter than the average person. But the reality is the market's actually pretty smart. People figure out, oh, this isn't really a great deal. And then collectively, this collective intelligence thing kicks in and then people don't show up because there's not real deals. When there are real deals, first the first people who come – get the deal and everybody else is rushing in afterwards things adjust it becomes not a real deal anymore there's nothing there anymore and then people start not coming anymore you know what's funny is all these people walking around all those crock pots and everything else are the ones just get one you me and my wife walk around the store she wanted the uh the who makes those dishes pioneer lady whatever her name is or they're really nice so my wife had her eyes on that earlier she, she really wanted that stuff the cutting board pots and pans and shit like so it was there i mean the pots and pans were there in the cutting board but there was no crock pots she goes, ah, that's okay so she, she took the other two but then we were walking around she goes, looks like somebody put a crock pot down so i just grabbed it yeah people just put shit down because they realized oh i didn't want this yeah they just grabbed it because it was there it was a deal and someone else was looking at it yeah uh-huh. like you stupid fuck you, know, you ain't got no goddamn money get out the goddamn store honestly this year there really wasn't like Mm-mm. big deals that like must go, you know. But did you see the line at Best Buy? It was like wrapped around the building. I didn't see that. It was ridiculous. I mean, I watched Channel 13. Oh, wow. I was like, what the hell? There's nothing really special. The TVs they're trying to sell you are really not that great. 
I mean, you save a couple more bucks and go back in after Black Friday or even on a regular day and buy a TV that actually is worth a damn. I mean, the the picture's so goddamn good that it looks like you're actually looking at someone in the face. And the funny thing is that's actually one of the biggest scams because even like LG and even Samsung and the big producers will actually produce cheaper component flat screens and flat panels that are made for Black Friday. Insignia. So. Uh, I forgot some of the crappy names you never heard of, like butt wax or some shit. <laughs> it was like, what the hell is this? Even, yeah. even the brands, though, their components oh, yeah. are literally cheaper it's for like, Black Friday. Like I got my, like I got another TV because my mom got another hand me down from me, you know? mm-hmm. so I got another smart TV, same size though, and I just got it with the updated software into it. Mm-hmm. And my salesman just says, "I'll give you a Black Friday prices." Nice. On the day I got them, I was like, Psh, "I don't know what the fucking rush over to do this shit." Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what the hell. You know? so, so yeah, so that was the whole Black Friday thing. Yeah. It was really, it was really a disappointment this year. Yeah. We interrupt this regular broadcast to bring to you a special program. Don't worry, the absurdity shall continue. Here's our guest interview with Stacy Jane. Hello. Hey, Stacy, what's up? Hey, how's it going? Pretty good, pretty good. How are you doing today? Oh, just peachy. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like it sounds like it how how was your thanksgiving did you have a have a good holiday uh it was all right it was busy gotcha How's driving gotcha do any black friday shopping no zero <laughs> yeah we were just talking about how it's not much of a thing anymore like hardly anybody really around here anyway even seems to do it and there's like no deals anyway so it's like what's the point right exactly I don't know. I don't know what the point is. <laughs> <laughs> Typically, I'm like done shopping at this point because I, I just already know what I need to get and I get it and I'm done. But like this year, it's just it's so it's such a weird year and I haven't even started shopping yet. I'm like, I don't even want to, <laughs> I don't want to go shopping. <laughs> so, Stacy, how about you uh, give us a little introduction for yourself for our audience and what you're all about? So I have my own podcast show called Panophobia Podcast, and panophobia means the fear of everything. So it's a show stemmed around, obviously, phobias, fears, anxiety, and pretty much everything that that encompasses. Um, yeah, I mean, that's that's pretty much it. <laughs> right. And what got you interested in doing that as a podcast? Um. Growing up with all kinds of social anxieties, I guess you could say, um, I I had phobias as a child. Um, I was pretty much agoraphobic by the time I was 12. Um, I developed some sort of uh, weird social anxiety of public places, and I didn't want to go anywhere in public. I couldn't even go in restaurants. I would just have meltdowns. It was a really strange thing. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't really know what the trigger was from it necessarily. Other than, uh, yeah, it just, uh, I had it at a very young age and it was uh, a struggle through my teenage years uh, and through my early 20s. <laughs> right. And what's crazy about that is that's where you started. And yet now... You're modeling, you're doing a podcast, you you get yourself out there doing all this different kinds of crazy stuff that, you know, a lot of people would actually feel very anxious and nervous about the whole, you know, being afraid of what other people are going to think and public humiliation and, you know, the standard things that people are a lot of times more afraid of than dying, actually. And you're out there and you're doing it and you're rocking your thing like it's nothing. Where did that change come in? That's a very good question. Um, I don't really know. As far as if was it like an overnight thing? It definitely was not. Uh, I think it was after college. I moved away from my hometown and I just started. I moved into the big city and I was living on my own. And it was like, well, I kind of have to do things. Have to go grocery shopping by myself. Have to go to all these places by myself. So it was more or less I had to force myself to live and and overcome all these challenges. Uh, And it probably wasn't up until like maybe five, six years ago uh, that I was really 
as far as outgoingness, like with the whole modeling stuff and everything. Um, I was also a very overweight child through like my teenage years and uh, early 20s and stuff. So there was that to overcome as well. Um, and so I just, uh, yeah, I forced myself to do all these things. Um, and, and that's pretty much how I started modeling and, and things of that nature. That was it. I just had a goal <laughs> and I went for it. <laughs> that's really awesome. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I started off as a, a size 16, uh, plus size model, I guess you could say. And now I'm a six. So, yeah. <laughs> Wow. And and that's, you know, I, I didn't even know the details of like that size. So I, I, that's what I love about doing interviews like this. You get to find out more about your friends. But you uh, you've had so much transformation in your life from where you started to where you're at today. And that's really interesting. And I think that's an encouraging thing for a lot of people, you know, that there's there's kind of this I would say this uh, mythology, this American mythology that it's like, you know, great people are just sort of born and, you know, you just know that you need to do this thing. And so you get up out of, you know, the out of bed one day and you have this this epiphany in this moment. But for you, it was necessity. And you were basically, you know, forced to start to do things differently and start to face your fears. And that accumulated and that snowballed where a little more every day, it sounds like, built up and got you to the point where you're at, where you're totally unrecognizable to yourself to where you were before. Right, exactly. I think what happens is in everyone's life, they kind of hit a wall or you hit a rock bottom of something. And the best thing about hitting rock bottom is the only way to go is up. So you just, you find yourself digging yourself out of your own hole, whether, you know, it was like you created it yourself or just circumstantial or how, however that may be, you know, I, I have a nine-year-old daughter and I went through a divorce shortly, probably in the, the first year that she was, she was born. So it was right after I had her and I was struggling with, with weight and I had blood sugar issues and I had uh, other illnesses that factored into my health. And I was just completely depressed and miserable. And I was like, I can't live like this. I can't uh, try to raise this kid on my own and, you know, be sick and feel like I was just defeated. So, you know, it was just those kind of motivations of like, I have to prove not only to myself, but to my kid that I can overcome all these challenges. And that's exactly what I did. You know, I started going to the gym. I started eating better. You know, I just started finding things that I was more passionate about. You know, I started painting. I was never a painter. I didn't start painting up until, you know, like six years ago. <laughs> wow. So, so it's just, it's stuff like that. You just kind of have to find the the things that that make you happy, that just fuel you and, and just go from there. How long have you been podcasting now? Um, I started in early 2016. So just over two years. The fear of hairy nipples. <laughs> I was trying to think of phobias. I wanted to know one of the fear of hairy nipples. <laughs> the fear of hairy nipples. <laughs> That's one to look up and let Sean know. Is that a thing? <laughs> I don't know. I just. I mean, I I, I would be scared. It's a very specific phobia. <laughs> what, what, wouldn't anybody be afraid of that though? I mean, how hairy are we talking about? <laughs> I don't this know. True. Are we talking about like a couple of hairs or like a plethora of hairs? We're talking about plethora. It's a plethora. <laughs> That's right. A plethora. You know, like Sasquatch. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like a dandelion with hair. <laughs> oh my <God>. Wow. <laughs> You're right. That does sound terrifying. <laughs> I might have nightmares. And now. in case you don't know who this is, this is Miguel, since Sean didn't introduce I know us, since he just kept on going. <laughs> I thought he was going to handle the interview by himself. We're just watching him. He's just gone. I'm like, go ahead, Sean. <laughs> I I'm used to you guys breaking in whatever you want, but oh you're both God. sitting here like, oh. <laughs> hey, Sean, you know, Rick and I are part of the show, too. <laughs> we got important yeah. questions hey, to ask. Okay, so, so, so here it is, Stacey. Here are these guys giving me shit. And, uh, oh, they're the meek and mild ones. Right. Right. Sure. Mm -hmm. As soon as we start in on our 
circle, and we're talking here about how our weekends go. Of course, these motherfuckers have to make fun of me while they don't say a thing about each other. Like, it's some kind of Mexicans versus white people shit going on here. <laughs> Fucking racist. I'm white. <laughs> I'm an introvert. Until I am in Gosh. here, apparently. What is... What is going on in Texas, you guys? <laughs> I have a white phobia. It's that wall, man. Ever ever since Miguel started building that wall. <laughs> nice. I'm here to make oh. America great. <laughs> I got a white phobia. I'm scared of white people. <laughs> I think that's a uh, legitimate phobia. Oh, my God. <laughs> white people scare me, too. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just noticing that you were, I mean, Sean mentioned you before, and I apologize for it's taking so long to get you onto the show, but, you know, Sean's not very reliable of contacting people, and, you know, I'm just saying. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Let me just crap on That's you That's actually more. true, but fuck you anyway. <laughs> That's all right. I'm you your guys, daddy. You suck. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, uh, so we apologize for getting you on so late, and, you know, since the last time Sean talked to you. Uh, was curious. I mean, like I said, I was looking at your, your Twitter and whatnot and checking all the phobias. It's kind of interesting. Uh, I suffer from a little bit of arachnophobia. Obviously, a, a little bit. bit. Well, fuck you, Rick. <laughs> spider comes out, I jump twenty feet, and I'm gone. So you see a, a spider, and you want to burn your house down? Yeah, that. Kind of, well, actually, you know what? My wife has has come a long way in helping me deal with that. So now I'm to the point where I can kind of kill them. Um, yeah, but the they're big, actually way more afraid of you than you are of them. Yeah, says the woman. To who be honest, says the woman who hasn't been bitten eight <laughs> freaking times. I've been bitten eight times, four times by brown recluses, and the other ones, I don't know what the other spiders would have bit me. Really? Mm -hmm. By a recluse? I have four holes in my body, thanks to the brown recluses. Oh, my God. I actually, I have a a good friend of mine who lives down in Indiana, and she was bitten twice as well, and she had skin graft. Like, it was real bad. It bit me on both sides of my hips and my calf, and then I forget what the other one's at. I think it's, I don't remember. It's I wasn't even that bad, because as soon as it happened, I knew what it was. But it all happened when I was in the army. Wow. (laughs) You know what? If I I was bit by a brown recluse, I would be definitely terrified, too. I'm like, oh, my God, my legs are going to fall off. (laughs) (laughs) terrifying well the very first time i got bit i didn't know and it i let it fester and it it got pretty bad uh it formed a lump the size of my fist on my calf uh and then my skin started peeling off of course you know how people are when you get sun and you know you get burned you want to peel your skin off so i was kind of like oh this is cool so i was just peeling layers off not really thinking about it like oh this is starting to hurt Uh, so i I showed my company commanders like uh you need to go to the doctor so i went to the doctor like yeah you got bit by brown recluse okay so they're going to shoot you with a needle, shot me with a needle, and then they cut a hole in it. And I still didn't feel anything. They turned me over, and, yeah. and I was laying on the cart. They turned me over, and I could see it uh, dripping out. I was like, oh, that's kind of gross, but kind of cool. And then they, put, then, they cleaned the Q- <laughs> then they got the Q-tip, and they stuck it in a hole, and that's when I started to scream. That shit well, yeah. hurt. I'm like, oh, like, my that's God. Not right. So, yeah, so now I pretty much, when the skin grew over, I can kind of poke, poke it down a little bit, and I can feel like there's a hole there. A pretty good size yeah. hole, too. Man, them hemotoxins. Yeah. Didn't yeah, the cider just messed me up, man. I don't know if I yeah. I never thought I had any claustrophobia before become any kind of being claustrophobic until uh a while back. I mean, you talked about your social anxieties. I, I mean I didn't realize that I started having panic attacks and anxiety attacks and everything else. My mother mm-hmm. has it really bad and I I didn't really discover mine until I was about thirty five, thirty six. And I was really sick and I couldn't breathe. And then I had something else going on, an infection and other things. So it was all at once. And I couldn't right. just not calm down. It was just so bad. Uh, so now I take medicine for anxiety and stuff like that. It's just crazy. So I get what you were saying about, you know, social anxiety and everything else. Cause I had a little bit of problems with that too. Yeah. Um, I mean, anxiety disorders are huge, especially in the United States. It affects more than 40 million adults. Wow. That's a lot of people. That is a lot of people. And, I mean, so if you think about it, about roughly just over 18% of the U.S. population has anxiety disorders, and about only 36.9% of them are actually treated for those disorders. So you it's would, a really interesting statistic. <laughs> yeah, that is. You would ask these guys about me, and they were like, how does this guy have a disorder? He's freaking nuts. <laughs> I, I, you really wouldn't know. I see, I'm i extremely stupid, crazy, unleashed, I guess. Unhinged is the word I would call you. <laughs> but right? You wouldn't know, I guess, that I've had all these other issues unless you're akin to me like Rick is and knows. 
or Sean yeah. knows. Right. Well, and, and I think that's one of the things, too, that a lot of people you know probably don't really think about, don't realize, is that a lot of these things... They, you're not necessarily, you're not actually, you're definitely not born with a lot of these phobias. A lot of this stuff, it no. comes and manifests over time. And right. sometimes it's, it's, it's unhealthy choices mentally and things that, that compile, that build up, that get you to a point where right. you're terrified of something that before you might've just had a minor fear of. And right. it's, there, there's, there's a thing called neuroplasticity, which basically means your brain adjusts and you can actually get out of said phobias. You can actually change yeah. the way you are. I'm glad you said that and you brought that up because that was leading me into my next question. Well, my next statement I was going to say with you, Stacy, considering you're doing the show on phobias and everything else, does it like right. I know a lot of people do who can be a normal person, but the moment you start talking about it's like the people that always claim they're sick or they're always ill or there's something always wrong with them or you have a headache yeah. and all of a sudden they have a headache. Uh, their food, boy, you tell them the <sighs> food is bad and all of a sudden they want to throw up. Doing these phobia yeah. stuff, have you like, has it affected you in any kind of way that you have to seriously like wash yourself or rinse yourself out of that, you know, like completely meditate away from it so it doesn't come off and all of a sudden you start to think, oh, I got this phobia too? Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm pretty sensitive and, and I'm very, I'm very much an empath. Um, and so I, I tend to absorb a lot of energy from people. <laughs> So it's it's really draining for me to to be around uh, a, a lot a lot of very miserable people. <laughs> well, obviously. Why are you friends um, with Sean then? I'm just kidding. <laughs> and I'll, I'll tell you a very interesting story. Um, when I I was a, a a young child, and I want to say probably like six or seven. I remember like first grade like comes to mind, and uh, mind you, I. Uh, I had a, a mother that would go to these these meetings and she would have to bring like myself and my my older brother. And uh, they were kind of like AA meetings, but they were called EA meetings. And what EA stands for is Emotions Anonymous. And I this is a real thing. <laughs> People would actually come together and sit with these books, kind of like Bibles in a sense. So think of like a Bible study, but it's like an emotional study. And people would talk about how bad their lives are. It was a really traumatic thing for a child to actually overhear. We weren't even supposed to be in on these meetings, obviously, but you can't help but overhear. And uh, I just remember hearing how troubled some of these people were. And I was just like, oh my God, is this real life? Is this what happens to people? And I used to be so inquisitive as a child and just ask all these questions with my mom. I'm like, why, why is, are they so upset? And, and why is this happening? And my mom would even actually kind of sit down and talk to me about a lot of people go through a lot of different things. Everyone has a story and it just depends on, you know, how they want to share their story. And sometimes people feel better when they share these types of stories. So it's like these therapeutic studies. Um, and these these sharing meetings, if, wow. if you will. And so I was fascinated with learning about people <laughs> and these emotional outbursts and things. And I was like, wow, this is so interesting. And then, of course, you know, I, as just a child and, and growing up, I'm like, oh, my God, now I'm like faced with all these other things that are troubling me and, you know, triggering these things. And that's what it is, is a lot of these phobias. Um, stem from childhood, traumatic experiences. Say you were in a car accident. You may develop certain phobias or fears from riding in cars or interacting in types of, of situations where you have public transit and, you know, things of that nature. Or, you know, say you were bit by a dog. You know, um, when I was, I think, nine or ten, I was attacked by a Doberman, and I was bit in the face, and I was terrified of dogs for a very, very, very long time. <laughs> you hear a lot of that, a lot of dogs biting kids, and then the, the fear of dogs yes. comes after that. And I just felt like I, I was like, wow, they're so unpredictable, and I was like, I don't know why that, that dog just bit me out of nowhere. I wasn't provoking it. I was in my own yard playing and it just ran across the street and came over and attacked me but you know there there's just there's things that you overcome things because you want to you know 
a, a lot of people succumb to uh, the fact of feeling defeated or just not trying hard enough. But and I get it. Uh, it's certain people are, are stronger than others with with certain emotional stabilities. And, and that's OK. And that's a thing. You know, we we're all different. We handle things differently. Um, I know for me personally, I overcame so many of these fears and things because I wanted to. I didn't want to live in fear and I didn't want to feel limited in my life or miss out on things. Actually, two years ago to this date, or uh, I should say a year ago, two days ago, let me rephrase that. Um, I got my very first dog. So I am a dog owner. And I've come a long way from, you know, being bit in the face by a dog to loving the crap out of my dog that I have. So I just feel like I'm living proof you can overcome so many crazy things in your life. And so that was one of the things why I really wanted to do this show and talk with other people about their life experiences and hear their stories and kind of let them get it out there. And, you know, if it helps people, great. I'm obviously not a licensed professional. I'm not a doctor. I'm not giving advice. Which they've um, done such a good job, obviously, since we're I all know. a bunch of nut jobs here. <laughs> right. We're just eclectic, crazy people. There's no money in the cures. There's only money in the Yeah, medicine. Yeah, only money in treatment, nothing in cures. The treatment, yeah. 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 But I, I just feel like, you know, it's 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 helpful. It's useful information. Um, and there's a lot of research out there and connections with people. And you have to find what works for you. Just because a, a certain therapy or treatment works for one person, it's not going to work for you. Like, Miguel, what you were saying is you're taking anxiety medications and it, it, is it helping you? Is it is it working for you? We started on, well, the interesting thing is I was having uh, multiple things. So this prescribed uh, both Xanax and uh, what's the other one? Prozac. Uh, Prozac. Okay. Two, two different things. And right. I, only, I only did one. One, I only took the one and it worked. Uh, and right. I, I never had to take the other one. It calmed everything down. So, yes, it has worked. Uh, dealing with other issues, they upped the dosage on my medicine not too long ago. Uh, and I've been on that dosage for a while. Now my doctor's working on trying to take me back slowly off it and see if that helps. Thinking that right. it might have, might have been a thing. I've gone through my own set of traumas as a young man dealing with things, uh, physically, mentally abused as a young child. Pretty much now, going back and thinking about it, pretty much being told I was worthless, pretty much being treated like I was worthless, uh, and dealing with people who constantly judge me uh, to the point that I became very angry. Yeah. And uh, very violent. Uh, mm -hmm. I still have a tendency to that, but it, the medication has helped me curve that a lot, which is really cool. Uh, you know, that's good. I don't, I don't, it's, I, it's helped you. There's, you know, there's so many things that go on in my life, and, and I have a degree, a master's degree in psychology, and I, I tend to think a lot about a lot of things and stuff you were talking about here, phobias and everything else. And I'm wondering, I forgot what I was going to ask you, but there's a question in regards to that. I've been through some crazy crap too. I've been mm -hmm. through some stuff because I think I saw something on your Twitter the, a few months ago uh, that you were like talking about ghost activity or negative energy yes. or something like within your house. I've yeah. been through some crap that I've seen that uh -huh. cannot be explained. My right. family and my and then even have relatives within my family who allegedly practice the dark arts. Uh, yep. <laughs> and so it's just it's just wild. So I was just like. I right. wonder so how much all this. <laughs> well, I wonder how much of this crap has actually affected me. Um, I have, right. I unfortunately have not seen anything like my father had, or my grandfather, or my grandmother. I've heard things. Uh, friends, I'll tell you a quick, funny horror. Well, not funny horror. A quick story. Uh, we were working at one time helping my uncle, and uh, you can blot over the company, uh, Sean, if you don't mind. And we were, I was still a young kid. Me and my cousin were playing around some boxes, and all of a sudden we. We heard a bang and we heard, a, oh, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden it got really cold in the box that we were in. We yeah. were in this big box and we all ran after we heard the, oh, and we felt something. My cousin said he felt someone touch him and he ran. So we were all ran around the corners of the offices where my uncle, my aunts and my grandparents were at. And they came out and they were walking around and they went over there to the, to the back section where the tractors were at and they saw like some kind of puddle. 
But there shouldn't have been any puddles because everything was already clean. They cleaned the floors and everything with all the stuff. Wow. So there's nothing left. So Luke appeared like another puddle. Uh, right. Apparently, that had been where the man had hung himself. Oh, okay. Uh, also, there's been issues within things around the house, seeing things in the house, uh, mm-hmm. hearing noises or seeing things like people sitting down in a chair next to you and you see yep. the sofa go down. Right. Uh, or my dog, I was holding my dog once outside and all of a sudden he went from being the kindest thing in the entire world to going completely apeshit murderous. Not at me, but he was trying to get at something Yeah, over my shoulder. Uh, hmm. I mean, I've, I've been through some, <laughs> the best one was when working at a grocery store, uh, my father and myself and some other guys were working overnight. We walked out to throw stuff in the dumpster. We looked to the right and we saw a figure. And I'm like, what the heck is that? Oh. Something clothed. It looked like it was in black. You couldn't really tell. Uh, but it had, we had some lights behind the store, but we could see. And it looked like it was moving toward right. us. And I, so I grabbed the piece of the, uh, the pallet. My dad said, you don't need to go near this thing. We know my dad kind of had an idea what it was already because him and the guys had already talked about it before I was even there. I was still barely 16, you know, being young, dumb and, you know, thinking mm-hmm. I could take on the world. Uh, <laughs> It turned to the right and walked across and then disappeared. It walked across through the through this field and then through this fence. But the thing is, there's a ditch. And when you walk in that ditch, oh. you literally go down and half your body will disappear. And then you come up and then there's a fence there. There's nowhere to go through it. So it went right. across the ditch and through the fence. Huh. It was an alien, just so you know. I'm not saying <laughs> it's aliens, but it was aliens. So here's the other thing. A woman had been murdered in that area. Ooh. Like a couple of years before that. And I, I mean, I could go on with all these paranormal sto- stories all in the yeah. same location. I mean, S- there's residual energies for sure. Yeah. It, it's just, you know, so I'm just wondering, you know, uh, and listening to my grandparents, listening to my uh, my dad, my mom and all this stuff. You know, my mom was like one. Yeah, my mom would always be like, y'all are crazy. My dad would. <laughs> tell me the, my dad would tell me the horror stories. My grandfather would tell me the stories. My grandmother would tell me the stories being back from the day because it was my grandfather's mother. Who was right. a so-called black art practicer, uh, right? And uh, so they would say all kinds of stuff. Matter of fact, the only, I used to have issues because my one person told me once before, you know, you're a bad person. <clears throat> I'm like, what? And this is someone I've never, what? I'm never going to mention names. who said this to me, but then came back and told me, you're evil and the devil himself. Wow. I was ten. Oh my. Okay. And then one time you was, were carrying something, and then you. it was a relative. Yeah. My relative was just being, part of my language, being an asshole. But anyway, <laughs> uh, so, uh, and oddly enough, my grandmother on my father's side said to me one night, it's uh, just come, just talking to me one night, because it's interesting. Whenever you stay here with us, nothing happens. Hmm. They don't see nothing. They don't hear anything. It's, it's, it was, it's wild. It was, it's weird. So crap like that was like just, but I've been outside before and I felt things like your back of your hair stands up right in your head, right? Not mine. It's like yeah. my facial hair on my face. It feels like, it, I don't know how to describe it. It's weird. It must be some weird crap. I'm telling you, I'm surprised I don't have a freaking phobia of ghosts or some crap. <laughs> but I'm like, it's just some weird stuff. And man. there is a phobia for Same. that. Dude. And mm-hmm. I think episode three or four that I did um, was talking about phasmophobia, which is the fear of ghosts. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. I uh, I had a friend of mine who came on the show and she's a, uh, She's into a lot of uh, psychic medium kind of spiritual awareness stuff. And yeah, it was a a very interesting episode. We did some meditation and yeah, it was cool. (laughs) Yeah, it's funny. I have lots of ghost stories. I have ghost stories from when I was a child. I have ghost stories up until like six months ago. I mean, (laughs) there's, I've had weird, weird stuff happen to me too. And like, it seems very questionable of like just everything as far as life on earth goes. <laughs> I got you. I've been in two head on collisions and walked away with not an injury. And yeah, not know how I, not I was told by a psychic. Let's see. I had a psychic come up to me. I was at a festival of all places, just a, a like a food festival. She walks up to me and this was probably back in like 2006. And she says, you were supposed to die a couple times. Still not your time. And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> Holy crap. I was like, to imagine some random person coming up to you and just says, I have to tell you something. You were supposed to die, but you didn't. And it's still not your time. And I'm like, okay. 
Wow. Crazy person. You know? <laughs> so see, and now then, here's where the smart ass Miguel would have been. Oh, you're going to die in two minutes. Oh, right? by my he hand. Like turning around like what is happening right now? And then did you not two years later, I was on the beach in Florida and a woman comes up to me again, same kind of situation and says, I was drawn to your aura. You're going to it's something of like your your life is is not to its fullest yet. You are still fulfilling it your your like prophecy is like she said something super profound and I was just like, wait, what just happened? Like <laughs> have I been in the sun too long? Like, wait, what? And it was just the weirdest thing. And I mean, this has happened to me multiple times of people saying these weird things to me of like, oh, you were really sick at this time in your life and that's never going to happen to you again. And you will be faced with this challenge. I was like, are you giving me a quest? Am I going on some treasure hunt? Like, (laughs) it was just super weird. And I'm like, I don't even know how to explain these things. I can't even make it up. It's just the most bizarre things that happen. Is it safe to assume that your favorite pho- favorite phobia, <laughs> the phobias that interest <laughs> you the most, or, or usually you have more stuff about it, are the ghost stuff? Or is it something I, else that you do more shows on or triggers you or, or drives your interest or piques your interest, I guess? I don't know. I, I think the whole point behind like panophobia, because like, like I said, panophobia means the fear of everything. And so everyone has a fear. Not everyone has a phobia. Phobias are specific fears that are irrational and intense and debilitating. So, but human nature, we we all have that chemical in our brain that stirs fear. You know, when you're watching like scary movies and stuff like that, you have that. Like, well, I can't say everyone because there are very few people, like very few humans that actually don't have that. But most do. It's just this part of our brain that triggers those types of that feeling of of fear. The basic fear response. Right, exactly. And and it's like, and to some it's exciting, you know, like some people get uh, love like horror movies. It's thrilling. Other people, they're too sensitive. They can't handle it. It, You know, there's actually a, a phobia of people that can't stand to watch scary movies. (laughs) <laughs> it's like cinema phobia. It's like they can't handle watching movies in general, especially oh, wow. scary movies. Wow. Yeah. Is there I thought I thought that was super interesting because I was like, is there somebody that has a phobia of scary movies? That's funny because like Native Americans were a lot of them were terrified of photography, of photographs. Yeah. Because they thought it would capture yeah. your soul. So it scared your soul. them. Yep. Yeah. Oh. There's a lot of um myths and and you know, cultural uh you know, stories like that. You can travel the world and and talk to people about different things, but I can tell you for certain, a variety of them all will have the same responses of types of phobias. Like, especially like you, Miguel, you were saying about arachnophobia. Mm -hmm. That's the number one most common fear or phobia around the world. Top, top one, spiders. You Mm. know what's second? What? Snakes. Really? Snakes. I was gonna, I That's was number gonna, two. I was going to guess snakes, but I'll, I'll kill a snake. I was going to say roaches. <laughs> I, I would figure it would be public speaking after spiders, but... Well, to, to be... Um, th- like, those are considered social anxieties. Mm-hmm. The public speaking. It's not technically a phobia. Even if somebody's I, terrified of it? It is, but it isn't. I think because phobias are super specific on something. Like, so to say public speaking for, for specific, being specific, um, I don't, I don't think they've really drilled down that to be a specific phobia because it is joined along with, uh, the social anxieties of public speaking and using public restrooms and eating with people like social interaction in general. It's, it's all grouped together. So it gets lumped in agoraphobia. Right. Gotcha. So what's the uh, so, phobia, if you don't mind me asking, what's the phobia of uh, being scared of frogs? 
Um, the amphibophobia, pretty much. Okay. I, I think frogs might be more specific, though. I could look it up. But I know that um, arachnophobia is spiders mm-hmm. and aphidophobia is snakes. Okay. Um, cynophobia is the fear of dogs. Um, there's so many. Oh, my God. There's, like, I tried to, like, <laughs> capture as many, like, phobias as I could, like, documentary-wise. There's hundreds upon hundreds. I mean, looking at your and Twitter, I didn't realize that. Being I mean, added. Yeah, the ones you had like, there, I didn't realize existed. Like, wow, really? That's a phobia? Right. And it's funny because I'll just think of something out of nowhere and wonder, is that a phobia? Is that an actual, you know, could somebody be terrified of something like that? Like doorknobs. <laughs> Somebody's afraid of doorknobs. Can you imagine that? That, that could be it's really like, a debilitating fear. Well, it can. It Especially because it, it would coincide with um, people that are like OCD and, and germaphobes or mysophobia, which is the, the fear of excess, well, it's like excessive washing and bathing because you don't want to get germs on your hands or your body. So there's those specific phobias, too. It seems like the phobias are mostly like a matter of associations with traumatic events. Yeah. Or, well, yeah. I mean, as far as what's been documented for what phobias are, majority are from childhood experiences, like traumatic childhood experiences carried through your adult life. So um, it's a very small percentage of phobias that develop as an adult versus as a child. Because we got that prefrontal cortex developed. Right. And it's, you know, you have all that development going on and the association of experiences that, you know, just pretty much mold you to who you are. So, you know, with you being afraid of flying and and stuff like that, you know, people that uh, feel like vertigo and and stuff like that, they do not like heights. Uh, A lot of them are are medicated or just are like, nope, I'm not flying. No way. Um, I had a friend on my podcast show and he had the fear of flying. And now he travels across the globe as a UA developer. Uh, he, he goes to these conferences now and he goes all over the place. And oh, like wow. a couple of years ago, he was like, I don't want to fly. I don't want to fly. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Chris, you gotta fly. You got to. You have to overcome it. You just, you know, you want to go do these things. And now he's super successful in what he's doing. Right. So you gotta, you like, gotta find a motivator. You gotta find a reason to go yeah. in and fix that post traumatic stress and get over it. Right. Well, he felt like he was, he was stuck in a, a job. He was like, I'm bored with it. I don't know what I'm gonna do. And so he got into doing public speaking overcoming a fear (laughs) um and doing these conferences and he got more confidence because people were listening and cheering him on and they're like oh you have these great speaking ethics and you know you're really uh knowledgeable and we appreciate you sharing your knowledge hey go sign up to this conference and it's in you know europe you got it fly to Europe. And he's just like, oh, well, that's a great opportunity. That's, you know, something different. And I mean, that wasn't like the first time he flew to Europe, but I mean, he started across the country here and then he went overseas. And now that's what he's doing all the time. He's traveling constantly. He's flying all the time, like every week. And so I'm just like, see, and I was like poking him on Twitter, like, see where you were, dude. You see where you were a couple years ago. You're welcome. (laughs) When it comes down to your podcast, like uh, how much research you go into and what phobia or type of subject you you decide on on you want to talk about that day? Um, It depends on who I'm having on the show. Usually uh, somebody either contacts me or I meet somebody and I reach out to them and say, hey, do you want to come on the show and and talk about, you know, your your story or or whatever? Um, and, And that's really it. And then I just. I do the research based on what they tell me about themselves and what they've experienced. And I try to find other things um, 
relative to their experience or, um, you know, I like to do movie references or like quotes of something just to make it a little more entertaining. You know, it's not complete, you know, uh, a total geek out of just like <laughs> saying all these psychological things. Oh, it's like just total nerd out with all these things. So, um, but I mean, yeah, it's, it's a bit nerdy, uh, because it's, it's a lot of information and, you know, you can only talk about certain descriptive words for so long. Right. But, you know, it's, it's entertaining, I think, because you get a lot of personalities on there and then, you know, people telling you their these, these real stories. So that that's, what's compelling for me is it's real. It's not just made up stuff. These are real people. These are real stories. These are real life influential uh, experiences. So it's, it's interesting in that aspect. Um, I, I'll spend hours researching different phobias and fears and, and things of that nature to um, incorporate into the show just to, um, for enlightenment even, you know, and become more knowledgeable of, of what I'm doing even, um, you know, like with the statistics that I ramble off, you know, I'm like, oh, hey, there's all these anxiety disorders. Did you know that 1.5% of the U.S. population are diagnosed with depression. Did you know that? <laughs> like 3.3 million. I'm just like, I have all these numbers in my head. I don't know what to do with them. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, so it's stuff like that. It, it's just, I, I don't know. I guess it's fascinating to me. I, I've always loved psychology and, and stuff like Absolutely. that. Absolutely. All things, all things are connected. And it's funny yeah. that it's funny that in a lot of ways, and, and I'll, I see this with, entrepreneurs. I see this with people that are really, you know, doing what they love to do. A lot of podcasters, you know, most, most people that I would say that are really heavily into, you know, media, into producing things of any, any nature, all, all manner of content creators will just say, have something that started in their childhood and they kind of forgot about it. And then they come back around and it's like, well, this is what I did. This is what I was interested in when I was a kid. This is the way I, I thought and what kind of compelled my curiosity then. And you come back around and you find yourself doing basically what you were doing then. And it's almost a deja vu moment where it's like, wait a minute, this seems really familiar. And it's right. like, this is what I should have been doing all along. Mm -hmm. It's like, if you think about it, you know, why do people join social clubs and things of that nature? Because you have some common interest, right? Right. We're, we're all connected because we all have something to fear something that's personal to us and has affected us, you know? So when you talk to somebody and you say, Hey, you know, uh, I was a agoraphobic, you know, as a teenager and then another person's like, Oh my gosh, I went through that too. And then you have like this in instant connection of, wow, something so debilitating and somebody else, you're actually both out in public at the same time with that phobia that you both overcame and you're like, wow, you're like, congratulations. Yeah. I'm proud of you. You know, you, you have that sense of, um, accomplishment and you're like, wow, that's amazing. Yeah. That's everything that you've done brought you to this point, you know, that and it's, and it's interesting like because it that. creates greater common ground with other people right. where if exactly. you only had the experience it's not the same thing because you're kind of tunneled in and you're kind of stuck in yourself when you're still dealing with the issues. But after right. you come out and you're on top of it, it's like you, you come to a kind of a, like a higher level of being, being human where you feel right. more relativity to the human experience and what mm -hmm. other people are going through. And it creates right. this bridge. It's really awesome. And speaking of bridges, we're going to go really quick into the, the uh, fast questions, Star sure. Trek or Star Wars. Star Trek, actually. <laughs> I love Star Trek more than Star Wars. And I don't know why that is. I really don't. But I, I think I've watched way more Star Trek than I have Star Wars movies. <laughs> Just hilarious. The phobia you're most proud of conquering. The phobia I'm most proud of conquering. I would say the agoraphobia of uh, being, being in uh, public places, for sure. Yeah, that was really hard for me. Superman or Batman? Yeah. Um, Batman. 
But of course. <laughs> <laughs> the phobia you're Which now is hilarious. The phobia you're now focusing on to overcome. Um it, I was I think it was it's more of an anxiety than a phobia at this point, which is uh well, no, I take that back. Because there's the phobia of the fear of failure, because I, I hate feeling like I can't do something good enough or well enough. It's, it's, it's like a, a thing with my job, even. <laughs> like, no, I could do better. <laughs> <laughs> What's that called yeah. anyway? Fear that if, if it's a phobia, that, that massive of a fear of failure. That's a great question. And I'm drawing a blank. Because there's, there's got to be, there's got to be like a distinction between the anxiety and the phobia. Cause there's got to be like a flat out phobia where it's downright like paralyzing it, that you could fail. Yeah. It's, uh, I, and I could be pronouncing it wrong, but it's like a tichiophobia which is the fear of failure. It's uh, it's really more defined as an anxiety disorder. Gotcha. Rather than a, a phobia. It's it's weird how how that works, you know, where it's considered a phobia or is it more anxiety disorder? It's just, it's. I think it's circumstantial. It's like the situation of how it's, it's causing it to be a phobia or is it induced anxiety, you know? Where you're just like your heart is racing, you know, you're just like kind of spazzy, like, oh, okay, you know, it's like taking a test. It's more anxiety, you know. Okay, back yeah. to the shallow. Avengers or Justice League? Avengers. I had a question. You threw me off. When you said that. <laughs> <laughs> now he's like answering the question in his own head. No, no, I know. I, I was thinking of a really good question. Guardians of the Galaxy. Here we go. <laughs> Nice. Wild card. <laughs> I noticed you have several tattoos. Were you ever f afraid of the needle? No, I was never afraid of needles. How many tattoos do you have? That's a very good question. And I do not have an answer to that as specifically as how many tattoos. However, I have a common theme of tattoos, and that is butterflies. And I have 32 butterfly tattoos. Wow. So we're not yes. afraid of the Mothman then. Okay, gotcha. We are not. No. <laughs> Plans for any more? Yes. I'm already working on many more. <laughs> I had a dirty question there, but I'll wait. Go ahead, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> it Same wouldn't be a show without one of those. Right? Yeah. It has to be. Definitely. Break up the monotony. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, what's your favorite food? Uh, I, in, in general, I would say Mexican food because... I could probably eat nachos and tacos every other day, if not every day. I like her more already. <laughs> I know. I'm I'm always like, who wants to go get some tacos? I had tacos for lunch, but I want tacos for dinner. Well, you need to come on down <laughs> to Texas. Tell you what. <laughs> this, yeah, right. seriously. The best Mexican food is definitely in Texas. You come down and hang out with us. You'll be taco full by the time I, you're done. I, you know what? <laughs> that's so. That's also like one of my, my unanimous goals that I've made for myself is traveling. And so I have literally traveled once a month for the past six months to a new destination. And Texas is on my list for 2019, by the way. Sweet. Sweet. And you know that's not far. That's not far away. <laughs> <laughs> so here's here comes the really the really dirty questions. Oh boy. <laughs> Sean's just looking at me. <laughs> so where <laughs> is the most interesting tattoo uh, that you have? Most interesting tattoo. That's that's kind of an ambiguous question <laughs> i guess it depends on how do you define <laughs> interesting what? try to keep it a little They're clean on this show pull bill clinton on this fine if where would we not expect to see a tattoo where you have one there you go <laughs> hmm yeah that's a good question i guess i don't know maybe the bottom of my foot no i do not have one that would be interesting <laughs> <laughs> but wouldn't i think that would be like an odd place that would hurt and i'm yeah that would hurt yeah yeah that would be a new but, level of pain right there man those nerves in the feet ah oh yeah i uh i have two tattoos on my feet i have one on the top of one of my toes and i have one right on the actual top of my foot that is the most unpleasant place to be tattooed i really i know well yes but no I uh, I had one when I was 19, and then by the time I was 29, I got it covered up because I have a full back piece. Ah, I know what you want to ask, Sean. 
Where the tattoos of the sun don't shine. <laughs> <laughs> I, what? How, how does this get pinned on me? You're the dirty guy. Over I'm looking here. right at you, Sean. I, 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 I'm the angel. I'm the saint. When I do the cover I, pick for this, I'm going to have this halo. I'm the one. Like in the last pick, but you're going to have the devil horns. He's waiting for me to ask these questions. That's why. That's wow. why I'm how on the show. How does that apply at a nude beach? Just saying. How does that apply at a nude beach? Uh, the nude beach. It's not relevant. <laughs> <laughs> have you been to a nude beach? I have. Where? In Mexico. Really? Huh. <laughs> Cancun? Yes. Interesting. Never been. Yeah. yeah, and these guys call themselves Mexicans. I wouldn't want to see you naked. Right? I wouldn't want to see you naked either, but I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even now now I'm disturbed just because you guys talked about being naked. That's 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 how bad that is to me. Uh, I don't want to see you naked. He's like, either. I need to shower after this <laughs> I mean, podcast. I mean, I'm proud of what I look like. I mean, Jesus. I mean, I got a body of a god, Buddha, but still it's a body. <laughs> I don't know. I think that's a bit flattering yourself, Miguel. <laughs> nice. All right, here we go, smart ass. Are you ready? You have a boy and a girl, right? I have a girl okay. who is nine. Okay. What are your feelings on her if she wants tattoos? Uh, Hell no. You're not going to tell her. <laughs> <laughs> I say when you're 18, that's your decision. It's your body. Gotcha. Go ahead, Sean, before I come back with some more dirty. <laughs> well, we probably need to let her go now, guys. It's already pretty late. So really quick, Stacy, unless you have a question, Rick, you want to throw on there? All right. Then really quick, Stacey, uh, throw out what... <laughs> Wow. Okay. How many piercings? Go ahead. Uh, eight. Ouch. Eight. Yeah. I had to think for a second. I'm like, one, two, three, well, four, five. Well, dang. Yeah. <laughs> and they're all in the ears? No. <laughs> <laughs> that would be doable, though, actually. That would hurt. I Well, you know what? At one time, yes, because I had my the cartilage. 10 times on both sides mm. so Ooh. but i don't i don't have all of those anymore so awesome awesome so we're gonna go ahead and uh go ahead and just put out whatever you want to about you know where they can find panphobic podcast and your social media and any shout outs you want to put oh, yeah. out there do all my handles yeah throw it out there <laughs> throw out the handles <laughs> so on facebook it's panophobia podcast and it's p-a-n-o P H O B I A. Um, Instagram, Panophobia Podcast. Twitter, it is capital M I for Michigan underscore Panophobia, P A N O P H O B I A. Um, I have episodes on SoundCloud under Panophobia Podcast, but not all up to date. So they're mostly on Mixcloud, which would be be under Stacy S T A C E Y dash Jane J A Y N E three uh, forward slash Panophobia podcast. That's I think that's it. Well, awesome. Jane, I sent you a yeah. friend request on Facebook, and uh, yeah, I think I followed you on Twitter as well from my personal Twitter. Yeah. And as yeah. your legal oh. advisor, Stacy, I would <laughs> I would suggest you don't accept them. Accept the <laughs> accept the friend request on Facebook. We we'll talk later. <laughs> You're, you're As your friend, I suggest you run. Change your name. <laughs> I didn't hear what you said. What did you say? I'm sorry. I said, don't blow up my DMs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. It's okay. You can I block them. I have enough him. of those creeper accounts, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the creeper you know. <laughs> I'm the creeper you know. It's like Casper the ghost. I'm your friendly neighborhood creeper. It's like, That's right. Is this, is this like going Batman or something? I'm not the creeper that she deserves, but the creeper that she needs. That's right. Oh At this moment in time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm your daddy. Okay. Well, anyway. I got it. Manunophobia. I got it. <laughs> Shut up. Okay. Yeah. Manunity. <laughs> It's what? I'm making up my own word. No. No, he's he's making up phobias based off of our made-up words now. <laughs> oh. See, we didn't even really drill down into, like, certain specific phobias of, like, uh, like there's the longest, a fear of long words. In this case, it would be long phrases, but long words. And it's, like, the craziest long phobia word. I don't even know if I can rattle it off to save my life, but it's, like, hippopotamon. Strasse equipped dilophobia. It's really fucking ridiculous. That's crazy. Long. And it's a long yeah. word. That's 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 somebody somebody's done fucked up on that one. That's like what the heck? That's the right. fear of hairy nipples. <laughs> yeah. We found it. No, but I, I think we should patent that. You know? We should. You know what? But you know what? I got another one for you, Stacy, and this is one you ought to try to what? use sometime. What about the phobia, the fear of podcasts? Oh, podcastophobia. 
Is it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you know, we need to see if it's a thing or do a podcast on it or something. Make one. We can phobia. totally do that. That's that, easy. That would, that would be freaking <laughs> awesome. I wonder if there's a Miguel phobia out there. Challenge accepted. <laughs> I'm sure there's a Mexican phobia, but anyway, go. <laughs> Whoa. Make one right? phobia. Make one phobia. You have no idea. Let me tell you something, brother. The white people love me. <laughs> well, you okay. know the fear of aliens, which is supposed to be like aliens, like immigrants, uh-huh. is is supposed to be um, a specific phobia too, really? which is xenophobia. Right, right. Which is, that's <laughs> that's gotten to mean all kinds of weird things. Xenophobic is pretty much just anybody that has like some kind of dislike for Anything strangers. Anything that's foreign to someone yeah. else. Yeah, it's funny how the language gets corrupted. Now, welcome to SexCast 101. <laughs> like, what, what is this, the Vatican? Does the Black Candle Mass happen after the, the real service? I do all the editing, so everything everything ends up coming out polished and shiny afterwards. So You can't say that on the air? I can say that on the air. <laughs> First He's talks got about some it. sauerkraut and sausage over there. He's polished. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Maybe these Whoa. two. I'm leaving for that. Oh, my God. <laughs> See, we're you know what we're gonna do a segment of uh it's it's just gonna be like a total barrage of just uh roasting and it's gonna be like the naughty cast. Oh, bring it on! I'm down. Yeah, (laughs) people are afraid of me. Bring it on. (laughs) You know how many people have offered me a job as like, would you like to be a sex phone operator? Like, oh my god, seriously. Are you naked right now? How much are you paying? Wait. <laughs> right. Pull your nipple ring. <laughs> right. Tell, tell exactly. <laughs> I got that. Here's my money. Take it. <laughs> Take my money. <laughs> well, it was awesome having you on, Stacey. I'm glad we finally got to... No, stop looking at me, Miguel. I didn't say nothing. I'm, I'm going to just... fucking punch you. Stop looking at me. You can't even reach me with your short stop arms. Stop looking at me, swan. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, oh, yeah. it was great having you on the show, Stacey. I'm glad we finally got you on here. It's an infection, Rick. Okay. <laughs> There's a cream for it. <laughs> Run away while you still can. Right? I, say, I say, you know what? Thanks, guys. You Thanks know, here's for what? having I, me on. I got a great idea. Stacey, come back and join us. Maybe the We'll do it maybe the Monday before Christmas. We'll, oh, do, yeah. we'll do the naughty cast since it's naughty or nice type Christmas shit. We bring her back on and we can have that just a total roasting of us three and her. Just oh, straight that would up, be perfect. Straight up naughty. Because naughty or nice. Rick will be the angel. Of course, you, yep. know, you and I are both devils. And Sean, I don't know where you <laughs> fall. Uh, it depends on how much I've had to drink. Stories for you guys because oh. I'm going to this uh, beer crawl or this bar crawl, I should say, called Santa Arky. Where every, uh, there's about thousands of people dressed up as Santa Claus, and we ride buses all around Detroit and bar hop all night long. Wow. It's, Naked? It's amazing. <laughs> No, she said dressed up as Santa Claus. How do you dress up as Santa Claus naked? Just got to get naked. <laughs> you just, you wear the, the hat. Oh, okay. There you she go. She got a point. <laughs> and your Christmas balls. Right, exactly. Well, thanks so much, Stacy. I hope you have a good night. You too. Talk to you soon. All right, have a good one. Mm-hmm. Bye. 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 Tracks Letters. Well, there you go, guys. Very unique interview. Uh, the reason I'm saying it is because phobia stuff is pretty cool. Uh, I actually probably would like to delve more into stuff like that, whether and talk more about it. I may invite her on my show uh, down the road just to talk more about yeah. crazy, the ghost stuff, basically, because that's the stuff that intrigued me the most. And that was pretty cool because I was watching her camera on her Twitter feed. It was kind of interesting. Uh, but I was a good guest there, Sean. Good, good, good grab, allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> what do you got to say, Rick? You got a phobia of talking to chicks with tats? No. Phobia of talking to chicks with tats? Y'all dick? were going on. So I was like, right. <laughs> nah, you know. Nah, I know you were listening. You were taking notes. You had some good questions in there. I, I saw you. I saw the brain smoke coming. <laughs> <laughs> brain smoke. <laughs> but no, it was really cool. I, I, That's interesting because I asked that question about, you know, how much of that she has to like wash off herself? Because you know people tend to let that shit stick to you. Yeah, it's like when you're a psychology major or psych, you know, get your bachelor's master's in psychology. You go in there and you start reading about all these different issues, and you're like, holy shit, I got this disorder. I got this disorder. You got no, 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 no. That's not me. You got you got to wash that shit off. It's like being, you know, I forgot the the word where you think you're sick all the time. What's the word? Uh, uh, I know the what you're talking about. Jesus um, Christ, I can't think of it right now. But every time they got to, they, they're sick or whatever. No, I'll, I'm sick again. You know, I'm I can't even think of the word right now. But yeah. That's the kind of stuff I wonder doing that kind of podcast, how much 
it would affect you as a human being eventually after going through so many of them. And if you had those issues to begin with, overcoming those those kind of fears, you know, you could probably just add more to yourself. It's, it's an interesting, yeah, it, it is an interesting thought because, you know, the placebo effect is very strong. And mm-hmm. it, it causes basically what you what you focus on is what you become a lot of times. So it is like when you when you deal with, you know, and therapists deal with it all the time, there's a, there's a form of uh, PTSD that's basically... Uh, a result of empathy, a result of dealing so much with the burnout, so many people coming in and sharing their pain and their struggles and their issues that eventually like it rubs off on you and you get a complex from it. So it, it is, it is a very interesting concept. And that's one of the reasons, you know, the balances of therapists. Now they're starting to be like, they'll, they'll say every, every good therapist has a therapist because that's literally like how it works. So my, my, uh, my take on that is, you're doing too much therapy. Like, yes. you need... Why don't you say like Sean Connery did on Jeopardy on uh, Saturday Night Live? I'll take the rapist for two hundred. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the rapist, Sean Connery. It's the therapist. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was a cool interview. I'm glad. Uh, you know, it's great being here on episode 109. Uh, I guess brought to you again, real quick. Uh, Tokyo Munchies, Japan Ramen Box, uh, Uncanny Comics, and of course, thanks, Paintball. And our radio affiliates, WBLZ Media, Ironic Radio, Beyond the Dawn, and No Fucks Given. For Critical Thinking Podcast, I am Miguel. I'm Rick. And Sean the Irishman. We out. Hey guys, you can connect with us on iTunes at Critical Thinking Podcast. And Twitter at Critic underscore Thinking. And also on Facebook and Instagram at Critical Thinking Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, Critical Thinking is on Beyond the Dawn Radio, which is known for playing the best indie radio music around the world. On Thursdays at 7 p.m. Pacific and 9 p.m. Central Time. And if you like the show, please five-star the episode and tell your friends. So thank you for joining us, thinking shit through one podcast at a time. (laughs) 